Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Ancient Mystery. In today's episode, the Tomb of Giants. The Sphinx appears to be guarding something. There is something behind it which was once referred to as the Tomb of Cheops. Now, today is a cold, dark day. It is raining out there, but it is not as cold and dark as the Tomb of Cheops. This is just remarkable. What we are looking at here is the Sphinx, and it's not just me saying it. It's all the commenters saying it. It's different authors saying it. Everyone is saying that the Sphinx used to be Anubis. Anubis, a guardian of the dead. There is a necropolis here next to the pyramids. The pyramids themselves are not a necropolis, but there is a necropolis next to them. And this is guarding something forever. It is guarding. And it's kind of what dogs do. This dog was guarding me, it's a, friend, a very good friend's dog, after I was guarding it, after I, sorry, after I was feeding it. And this dog, it's a she, started to press itself up against me and face away, and, and that, that's, how, that's how it guards someone when it's protecting them. Because that's how they show their loyalty. So that would mean that the Sphinx itself is pressing up against something that it is guarding. So we have to look at what is immediately behind the Sphinx. And then we will know. It's hard to see anything here. We need to look at a map. And really the most significant thing behind the Sphinx is Campbell's tomb. On old maps, this is called Khufu's tomb. It's always been a shaft. You go down the shaft, you find... Enorm you used to find enormous granite sarcophagi bigger than a man. Sarcophagus is big enough for oxes or giants or something like that. Then there was a, a, a another flooded shaft where you could go down lower, but only if you dived down. And that was a colonnaded hall with a tomb in the middle surrounded by water. It was supposed to be a kind of island surrounded by water, and it was very similar to Herodotus' description of Khufu's tomb. So this used to be called Cheops' tomb. So someone must have gone down there about 200 years ago and told people this. Again, the same thing, the so-called Campbell's tomb. And that's what it looks like today. As you can see, ain't nobody going down there. No one is going down there. And it's, it's a very precipitous drop. Uh, maybe that's why they filled in it. I don't know what is going on here. It's a bit odd. And we can look at very old pictures to find out what is actually really going on. This is an old book from 1837. And I'll provide a link to this so you can study this. Or at least pictures from it online. High resolution pictures. It's from 1837 by E.J. Andrews Esquire with sketches taken on the spot. Unbelievable. Let's check this out. Here we have a high resolution map. And... If you zoom in, there's the Great Pyramid. You can see everything has been quarried. Everything has been looted. Even in 1837, every little mound. People have tried to strike it rich. Everywhere you look, it's even this, this Queen's Pyramid here, right through the top. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. And we go to the Sphinx. You can see the Sphinx was partly buried in this time. There's a dotted line here, and it just says crude bricks over here, crude bricks here. These are the bricks on top of the Sphinx enclosure. They don't possibly yet know it's an enclosure. There's only a vague outline of it. They haven't excavated the Sphinx as of this period. And here is Campbell's tomb. It's the only thing really behind the Sphinx. That's it. There's a few more. There's possibly a tomb there, something here, something here, something here, something here. But that's about it. Here there's pit number two, it's called. And look at this. This is... This is one of the few pictures that exist of what was in this shaft. The shaft of Osiris, or Campbell's tomb, as it's also known. View of the building in Colonel Campbell's tomb. And as you see, there is something weird going on. There is this weird thing with a, a sort of Romanish arch. A, a bizarre hexagonal shape here. And then this... It's almost like a light box. You would view through here and look at that and... It's some kind of weird device, and this guy's chipping away at it, possibly destroying it, because the fact is there are no photos of this. It is gone. It's not there anymore. It has been obliterated. This was found. It's in the British Museum. A granite sarcophagus. Looks almost Old Kingdom. 
And these were found. These are Shabti dolls. These are basically idols. 26th dynasty. This man, Selim Hassan, he went down Campbell's tomb. And he found some granite sarcophagi, really big ones. And he said that this is extraordinary. He said that there are sarcophagi here. Two of these sarcophagi, which are of basalt and are monolithic, are so enormous that at first we wondered if they contained the bodies of sacred bulls. In the eastern side of this hall is yet another shaft about 10 meters deep, but unfortunately it is flooded. Through the clear water, we can see that it ends in a colonnaded hall, also having side chambers containing sarcophagi. We tried in vain to pump out the water, but it seems that a spring must have broken through the rock, for continually da continual daily pumping over a period of four days was unable to reduce the water level. I, might, I may add that I had this water analysed, and finding it pure, utilised it for drinking purposes. And this man, along with people like Walter, Emery, etc., they are the best of the Giza archaeologists, because he actually reported everything that he did. And Giza has been cursed. It has been cursed by archaeology, because what has happened is, people have not reported. Even Wikipedia is saying there's a cover-up. I'm not saying there's a cover-up. Wikipedia is saying there's a cover-up. You look at this article by S about Selim Hassan, and you read what this says here. Selim Hassan, this was in the 30s, he was doing his work, excavated in several seasons the central field at Giza. He found and recorded many mastabas, and discovered several undisturbed tombs. The results of his excavations are published in ten volumes. From about five missions working and excavating the cemeteries at Giza, his work is regarded for science. The most important one. George Reisner, working at the same cemetery, published only little of his results. Hermann Juncker, also working at Giza, concentrated in his publication very much on architecture with long chapters better, better placed in articles on different subjects, but not on his finds. Unbelievable, you see. Even Lovecraft mentions this in a book called Buried with the Pharaohs. It's a short story. If you've read Lovecraft, you know how he writes. It's absolutely unbelievable. He says after this, his main character is going and looking at the architecture or whatever on the Giza Plateau. It's amazing the way he writes. He always victimizes the narrator. The narrator is a victim of dark forces around him. So after this, we made the continual circuit of the Pyramid Plateau. Campbell's tomb, now this is Lovecraft writing about this in the 30s, whose shadowy shaft sinks precipitously for 53 feet to a sinister sarcophagus. So he was, if he, if he knew about the, these giant sarcophaguses, he was calling it a sinister sarcophagus, which one of our camel drivers divested of the cumbering sand after a vertiginous descent by rope. So this could have been open to tourists in the 1930s, which is unbelievable. He writes even about a cover-up. He says, regretted the omission we had made. Such fascinating things were whispered about lower pyramid passages, not in the guidebooks, passages whose entrances had been hastily blocked up and concealed by certain uncommunicative archaeologists who had found and begun to explore them. You know, I just find it fascinating that he talks about a cover-up even in the 1930s. And we know something like this has been going on because it's very hard for anyone to excavate. Obviously, this is Egypt's greatest asset. And yet, it is hard for anyone to find out anything about it. So, yeah, I just find that really fascinating. This is the top of Campbell's tomb, and it is absolute perfection. It looks like even pre-Old Kingdom. There is a lot of erosion here. The erosion I pointed out in a, in a much earlier video, which I did about half a year ago, it sort of matches the erosion you find on the Sphinx. This could have been all drowning in water, rising up and down, because the, the entire lower part is flooded, except in 1999 when Zaki Hawass, if you'll recall on TV, there was a TV program, The Tomb of Osiris. And he went down there and he said it's very similar to Khufu's tomb, and it's a tomb for fertility, a tomb for Osiris. But if you look at this, it just shows you the antiquity of the stuff. The, the erosion is so similar. Water could have, the water table could have risen right up here, and this could have been covered in a swamp. 
And that's what caused the erosion. It could be the same age as the Sphinx. It could be 10,000 years old. So after all that, I ask you again, is the Sphinx guarding its masters? And those tombs, I'll show you. This is, this is one of the, the two sarcophaguses that are left. The other one disappeared. This is covered in water. This could have been Khufu's tomb. It is on an island. And here there is water all around this small island. And that's the shaft going back up there. And we don't know how much deeper this goes. There could be more. There could be a lot more, but they had to pump and pump and pump just to get down this far because a spring has broken in. And it, it's absolutely, I think this is one of the most interesting parts of Giza, one of the oldest parts of Giza. You look at that workmanship, it's just like those so called alien coffins at Saqqara, if you check another video. Absolutely unbelievable. This was made by alchemical processes, it's possibly geopolymerized, created by geopolymer rather than carving. And these are just, just too big for normal men. That's the thing. I'm not sure about this one, but the other ones which were found in the level above this, up this shaft, they're just too big. Is it guarding? Is the Sphinx guarding its giant masters? Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Mysteries.